Yeah, hold your finger, I'll let you feel its heartbeat. Wow. That's about 250 beats a minute because he's nice and calm right now. I was going to say he's probably just frozen. Like, what are <laughs> yeah, they doing to me? When they're flying around, it's like 1,200 beats a minute. Wow. You know, feel his heartbeat. I can't think of any other kind of bird I'd rather watch than a hummingbird. I've travelled to Arizona to see most of America's hummingbirds. And I've been to Costa Rica twice just to watch and enjoy them. But my favourite place to watch hummingbirds is here at home in my hummingbird garden. The ruby throat is the most common hummingbird I see in our area between March and October, but during the winter months I've seen 10 different species in North Florida and Georgia. In North Florida, the most common winter hummingbird we see is the Rufus. We know this because of hummingbird banders like Fred Dietrich. He's banded three different Rufus in my backyard. Banders with Hummingbird Research Inc. have been collecting data on winter hummingbirds for over 20 years. I started with Fred Bassett in 2001, helping him, and then I got my permit in 2009 to band on my own. Uh, I probably banded around 2,000 hummingbirds. Nine different species in Tallahassee alone. Fred has caught and banded seven different hummingbirds in my yard, including this rare broadbill a few weeks ago. Right. They have iridescent blue feathers on there. I think it might be. It does have a little bit of a grooving on that. Let's see if I could say thirty percent. All those hours creating my garden paid off. Fred invited me to join him for a couple of days while he banded hummingbirds in Tallahassee. It was both enjoyable and fascinating watching him catch, band and collect data on these tiny birds. To catch the hummingbirds, Fred hangs the homeowner's feeder inside a cage with a trap door. When the bird flies in to feed, the trap is sprung. Fred then reaches inside the cage and retrieves the bird. The bird is fitted with a tiny band that has a unique code engraved on the surface. If the bird is recaptured, the data can be retrieved from a database kept by the Bird Banding Laboratory in Maryland. Banding hummingbirds is a highly skilled profession that requires years of training and a special license. A little notch in it, yeah. And also the width of R5 down here. Oh, yeah. so on an Allen, yeah, it's like, it's like less than two, like 1.8 millimeters. Fred is often asked if banding hummingbirds is harmful to them. After releasing this female Rufus, it flew back to its favorite perch and began catching bugs. I filmed this calliope over a week after it had been banded. And this male calliope stayed for several weeks. Amazingly, this female Rufus was recaptured six months later in Alaska. Research has revealed that these birds return to the same backyards for consecutive winters. One lucky homeowner has had 74 different hummingbirds banded in their yard. So far this winter I've had three different species. So under here, under groove, and put 40 there. So that means it's a young bird. It was born last year, maybe June or something last year. And it could have been born in Alaska. They breed in very tip of Northern California up into Alaska. Mm -hmm. So this bird's at least like 3,000 miles further away from where, it, usually they go down the coast down in Mexico. But this bird has come, probably went down the coast and then for some reason decided to go east. 
Fred is always excited to share his knowledge and passion oh with God. others. <laughs> <laughs> For more information, visit this website and put out your own feeder. Maybe you'll get a winter hummingbird. Let me know in the comments section if you have questions. I'll be posting more hummingbird videos throughout the year, 